I want to talk about economies of scale. We've gone through a bunch of different business processes in the mortgage industry and I want to talk about where the economies of scale are. Now economies of scale means that um, overhead can be spread out and it means there can be barriers to entry. That is, once one firm gets really big, its costs are a lot lower than other firms. Another point would be your process is not terribly labor intensive. That um, your computer systems, in particular, uh, can take care of a lot of the work. So what are some of the business processes that are characterized by that? Um, I'd say the m most economies of scale are probably in the credit repository business. The credit repositories, remember, are the Equifax, um, Experian, those types of companies. I think there are just three of them and they collect all the credit data on every individual and it's very hard to enter that industry because you basically you, in order to have some credibility you have to develop processes for sorting out one John Smith from another John Smith you have to sign up every uh, store that offers a credit card uh, so there's so there were huge barriers to entry to the credit repository business as opposed to something like credit scoring where if you as long as you have access to the data data in the credit repository you can create a score so it, it's odd that there's one company fair isaac that has such a dominant market position in credit scoring when really just about when there should be a lot of companies that can do it. I mean I've got nothing against Fair Isaac. Uh, Twenty years ago I met some of their people and they were very nice, very honest, uh, very dedicated people. But why should they dominate credit scoring? And my guess is that they don't really. <clears throat> that it's more like uh, they're like the Xerox of copying or the Kleenex of tissues in that their name has become synonymous with credit scoring but there are actually are other competitors in, in the marketplace and in the end people can choose other competitors so I think there's actually low barriers to entry there so not big in credit scoring. Uh, another huge economy of scale is loan servicing because there you're basically processing payments. Most most of the time people are making their payments no problem. Every once in a while somebody's late and you've got to nudge them. But it's really a it's processing payments and it's uh, the more loans you can put through the system the better. I mean if you let's say you have one million dollars of overhead I mean, you're going to have more than that, but let's say a million dollars of overhead per year. If you spread that over a thousand loans, then you've got a thousand dollars of overhead per loan per year to, to make up. If you spread it over a million loans, then you've got one dollar of overhead per loan. So, you, so once you get big, you have this tremendous cost advantage and people who are placing ser servicing, not these are companies that will uh, contract with servicers, will see very big price differences between somebody who's a large servicer and a small servicer. So there's some very big economies of scale in loan servicing. Pooling loans into securities also has big economies of scale. If, you, uh, if, if you're buying a pool of mortgage loans, you really want a lot of similarity in terms of uh, 
the coupon on the loan and the uh, maturity on the loan. If the <coughs> if you have let's say coupons that range from uh, three and a half percent to four and a half percent, that is the mortgage rate uh, underlying the the um, mortgage rate on the different mortgages in the pool is goes that wide, then you really don't know what you're buying because if you're buying it in an environment where the rate is around three and a half percent, a lot of these four and a half percent loans are going to prepay. Um, so that you you end up if you have a wide variety of of coupons or maturities, the buyer ends up having to look at the pool almost loan by loan to figure out what it's worth, and that you want to avoid that. You want to make it be that <coughs> the the pool can trade without people having to examine the specific loans in it. So pooling into securities has economies of scale. You, you want to have lots and lots of loans of a very similar type in order to put them into pools. What about origination? No, in the because it's very sales intensive. I mean, what actually what happens in the origination area is that uh, salesmen work very hard to bring borrowers in, and frankly, they work very hard to try to bring them in uh, by char while charging them slightly excessive fees, or maybe more than slightly excessive. So it's a very sales intensive business. So it's labor intensive, and so you have a lot of little players. And what about the uh, bearing risk, default risk, for example? Well, there are some economies of scale in diversification, but that, but that, those economies of scale go away uh, pretty quickly. You know, 50 loans, 100 loans. I don't know how many it takes to have a lot of diversification default risk. I guess because it's Default is rare, maybe you need a thousand loans or something, but it's nothing like servicing. Um, and interest rate risk, again, that's just, <coughs> you don't need huge scale in terms of, there's no advantage to huge scale in terms of interest rate risk. Here, I think the big advantages turn out to be who has a government guarantee with the least regulation. And we'll go over this again at some point, but the um, you know in the sixties the savings and loans had a government guarantee with the least regulation. By the nineties uh, you have Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae with a government guarantee with the least regulation. And um, in the let's say the ten years, or maybe the six or seven years prior to the financial uh, meltdown, you had some banks with a government guarantee or an implied government guarantee, and less regulation than Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae in terms of keeping them out of the uh, subprime market. So. The the point here is that when it comes to default risk and interest rate risk, the scale economies are artificial. Are you know whether there are scale economies or not doesn't matter as much. It, what matters is government guarantee with the least regulation. And finally, let me go back a little bit to this point about pooling into securities having a large economies of scale. One of the things that that means is that if securities drive the mortgage market, you will tend to have a lot of uh, advantages to standard products. When we were talking about 
you know, the disclosure forms on mortgage pools, you know, I talked about things like sort of a, one of the things was called a WAC arm, weighted average coupon adjustable rate mortgage pool, uh, sometimes known insultingly as a wacky arm because there you don't have a common set of mortgages in a pool. You have a very disparate set. You might have five-year arms, one-year arms, whatever. They just have uh, similar coupons uh, to them because they're, because they're not standard products, but uh, you want to have a, d a big pool of loans. You pull together a bunch of things that are different. Well, those don't get priced very well. Again, the the buyers of those uh, pools of collections of odds and ends um, have to be very careful about what they're buying, and they don't give such good prices. So standard products have a big advantage in pooling. So you um, you know, so even if the 30-year fixed-rate mortgage is not inherently the lowest cost way of, uh, of lending to borrowers if it's if it's a standard it will be lower cost than other mortgages just because of the advantage uh, when it comes to pooling so in a world of mortgage securities standard products will, uh, will allow you to take advantage of economies of scale I think I'll leave it with that